Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia. Welcome back to part 26 of our tutorial series on Total War Three Kingdoms featuring Cao Cao. We pick things back up in the summer season of 197 on turn 35. Uh, we've been picking up pace in the last few episodes and we left off here as Yuan Shao has arrived personally to siege our town of Pengcheng. Now this is a large town so as long as he do not siege it out for the entirety of the five turns I believe we have a chance to beat him with the structures in the town. And there's a chance he could have some fire arrows, but we checked. It's actually very rare for this general, given his active ability to have fire arrows. So we should be fine. We will devise a rescue plan, of course. We won't let them just keep sieging. If they do that, we are definitely in trouble. Uh, but before we get to that rescue plan, we're going to take care of other things first. Because uh, he can't attack us during our turn. There is a few structures finished, there is no new generals this turn, there is no new items, we don't have enough credibility points. We'll check turn coats and diplomacy at the end. Uh, we can make note that Tao Ying's army tried to attack Zhou Rong here. They both took damage and he wasn't able to wipe them out. Our turn coat is actually severely injured without resiliency. So there's a chance he could die if Zhou Rong retaliates and chase them out. That could be something we should consider. Maybe we want to withdraw him now so that he doesn't die because he does have a silver armor here. So we could get value from just grabbing him and then firing him afterward. We don't really care for his retinue or his character. So we can decide that at the end. Our main army finished getting the trade port last turn where we last piece of land for us to grab from the High Empire before we pieced out with them through their vassal master in Dongmin. Now we're going to turn on Zhang Chao. Uh, we made sure we didn't have any active deals available with him so that we can just go to war with him. I don't think many factions would be very pleased for us to destroy them, but I think it's okay. They don't have any allies, so no direct friends. There just might be some factions who would be angry at us for actually attacking people. Uh, but we'll be declaring war, and let's see. No one cares. No one cares. Perfect. The only unfortunate thing here is all these generals will die because no one has resiliency. If we don't capture them, they're just going to die here in the garrison wipe. We could try to rescue a few of them if we want any by taking a look if they are part of any turncoats. She is, but she is not on the field. So we don't really care about that. Uh, she is... Zhuo Rong's old, this is, oh no no, that's Zhuo Rong's faction's daughter, never mind. Is she on the field? She is on the field. No one from Zhang Chao's faction is even willing to be a term co, so it's not even going to matter. We are just going to march over there. I would like to have an increase in capture chance, so perhaps we can swap an item out. We can grab one from Zanba or Hua Xiong, probably, I mean, I don't think we get to choose. I think even if I pick Zanba, it might be Hua Xiong. We'll lose some ammo count, but that's no big deal. I want the 10%. And this trick will only work once. We mentioned that already, and it actually showcased how it doesn't work twice. So we picked Zamba, yet his item's still here. Which is awkward, but that is the way things are. We are going to go attack them now. And this is their only piece of land, so once we beat them, they're going to be gone. We're not taking high casualties attacking this uh, farmland. Or actually, is it a town or farmland? map for you please maybe it's a town oh no it's farmland it's open field now how are we expected to take high casualty against this army setup yeah sure it's a high level farmland probably level three or four but okay we'll show them let's jump into the fight Alrighty, we're loaded into the battle it's a summer foggy day so visions kind of obscured accuracy on range units also lowered there's a nice lake here which we can utilize. Uh, the enemy will be charging at us because we have siege weapons. I will probably protect the farmland and fight on this side. We, we can burn it, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, we will hug the lake uh, to use it to protect our flank, basically. Uh, the tree here is a little bit annoying because I'm worried about setting it on fire. So... Hmm, maybe this will have to do. Maybe it will shift it a little bit out, just in case. 
All right, and then we'll stack all our crossbowmen right in front of them. We still don't have Night Battle Unlock nor Fire Arrows. They're on the same skill, so we'll just utilize that. There's a nice piece of rock here as well. The terrain can all be used. So we can choke up to the rock that pretty much protects us over here. I'm going to put one group right here. I'll have these guys flank out against the enemy range, and if they do want to flank us this way, we'll have a counter flanking unit. We'll see if we can get a duel, and everyone else will just chill in the back. Here they are, we'll hotkey our trebuchets, turn off auto firing, and give them a few shots here. Reload. Let's go. We have fire now. They're moving pretty fast, to be honest. Uh, seems like their cavalry's coming to this side. I don't think they'll survive our crossbowmen because we have. Um, they have shock cavalry, so there's no range block chance on them. They're moving much faster than I expect. Alright, we gotta hit a little bit farther ahead. Now, does Zhang Chao want to duel? He doesn't want to duel any of us? Okay, that's fine. We don't want them in turtle, because if they go in turtle formation, the enemy range will stop shooting at them. We just want to maximize their range block chance here. We'll give them charge resistance as that unit come up close. Nope, they're getting beaten back by our range. I'm gonna pull him back a little. Alright, it's time to loop our cavalry out to kill their range. Alright, charge resistant boosted. We'll let them charge us. Make sure no one filters through the gaps. Pop them out. No time to micro these guys. They can fire well. Actually, no. Go for range. Shot cavalry. Charge the axe unit. We'll group them on two different numbers. We'll just charge through them. Alright. No need to bother with generals. I'm gonna just hammer and envoy them on the front line. Get rid of these spear guards. Alright, so I'll go take care of him. Does he want to do it now? No. Clear that. Alright, they're done. It doesn't matter if we kill the strategist. He has unbreakable, we can see a hundred morale. So we have to kill him. Uh, everyone's gonna get killed from the garrison wipe. Yeah, but they will both route. He will never route, so we just have to go murder him. 
We'll borrow our cavalry unit to help. Oh. We have one guy who recovered. Got him. Okay, now they should all route. Alright, that's a win. That shouldn't be high casualties. Don't know what the system was thinking. Alrighty, let's see how many men we actually lost. 118. And they get wiped and everyone's dead. Uh, we didn't capture anyone, unfortunate. We become Marquis. So we were very close. We were one prestige point away. Capture a new piece of land gives us enough prestige. And faction wiped. The increase of our rank help us by giving us more administrators, assignments, and army slot, as well as new court positions. The bonus for Grand Director will be increased farming uh, food, basically. Grand Tutor will increase the character experience rate and trade influence, which is actually pretty helpful uh, of these right now, because in the early game, you can get plenty of trade depending on which reform route you go, and often those trade income will have a higher base value than even your peasantry or your industry. Uh, the food one's the useless one, uh, unless you really need food, but in our case, we have surplus even as we trade away most of them. Taltal ranked up. He already picked up all his leadership skills. Now he does have a unique active, active ability here that allows for increased cooldown of all generals on the map, infinite range. It's actually super strong. Basically every second you get minus 5 seconds of the cooldown ability which allows your generals to use their abilities over and over again. So it's actually quite strong. He can also pick up night battle but I think I want to reserve that eventually for what's that he will eventually get that. So we're going to go with his unique ability first and then we're going to work his way to get unbreakable and probably mighty knockback and extra speed. These are all very useful. This one's one we probably can ignore. We... Oh, kind of want nature's ally as well, but there's three that we can't take. And if it's going to be, let's say, purse, uh, I think we might not be able to pick up nature's ally unless we pick up stability. And I really would like these as well. Mm, can't have them all, but we'll figure it out when that time comes. Alright, our army has one over here. We're going to not attack the High Empire because we can't. We already pieced out. We're going to attack Jorul next. Uh, we don't have any active deals with them. I believe we had a deal with them, but I think it's been long enough that we can just declare war on them without any issues. And we'll do that after we heal up this turn inside this settlement. I'm waiting for Sahodun to pick up rank 6 so we can get heavy spear guards instead of these light versions. Over here, we sent them to come take care of some of these rebel situations so they can get some experience. He doesn't have items, nor do I care for him to summon a second general for the possibility of items. I just want to start clearing out these armies. Because we already fixed the tax rate, so they should all be bouncing back. And we got a level up on Xiao Yuan. We're going to go over here to rescue them. Xiao Yuan is pretty injured. We'll summon him back and then recall him and summon him back onto the field. We'll pick up Fury. I guess we want reach. I don't want clarity. Passion's pretty good. Flexibility. Yeah, these two are the key. This one's not that great. Hmm. We'll pick this up first. And then we're going to recall him for the healing since he took the bulk of the damage. Alright, most of the south is fine. We have Yuan Huan trying to get us the copper mine, which we will be able to get this turn. And then he can be summoned back as well. We don't need him onto the field taking up one of our army slots. And he will be recalled too. We're going to upgrade this. 
We're gonna get the garrison to be increased so that we get more replenishment as well. Okay, so he hasn't taken most of this yet. He can help us colonize. This is a pretty okay border. Um, yeah, I'm, I feel pretty good just capturing these. We'll get this back eventually. We'll let it upgrade. Right now you see it's deserted. It will be better if he can upgrade it a couple times for us. Uh, I feel good holding on to just the Lumberyard and the Rice Garrison. Both are very defensible. The Copper Mine's very defensible. This is our weakest point, but it's being sheltered by this Lumberyard and this Copper Mine. Uh, of course, if Swinsko attacks us, then we can't really defend it, but hopefully we'll have a second army soon. Elsewhere, we're going to have to rescue them. There's a couple plan. One is we summon a new army here. We already have a nice conscription building upgraded for plus three rank, and we can have that army replenished pretty quickly now that we have pretty high global replenishment bonus from our two rice garrisons in the south. And then we can launch that force to attack Yuan Shao and uh, push them out. That's one option. That's not the cheapest option, obviously. The cheapest option would be possibly during this end turn, after one turn of suffering through attrition, which they are because they have no reserve, he will just launch the attack. And if he does that, we can just beat him this turn, then this army recruited would be wasted. So we're going to observe for one turn, just to see what they do. If they don't attack us and they remain in the siege, then we might send out a rescue army and start getting them ready to go help. But in the case they just attack us this turn, then we'll be wasting money. Now we're just going to take care of our commanderies. So Danyang's pretty much full built given our current reform situation. We can probably upgrade this to the T. There's two branches of the M building. One branch requires you to have the T resource. We have a T because we are trading with Sun Ce. They own a T plantation. It's a specialty county like copper and salt. So this way, if you compare the two, 140 base plus 50% discount versus 170 base plus 40% uh, multiplier, not discount. So you get a higher base, slightly less multiplier and it kind of extend that ratio all the way down and my argument is the base figure there's a 50, uh, 20 percent 25 percent increase in the base figure at the max level but only a 20 percent decrease on the ratio and especially in this commandery where the base value is very limited because you only have a trade port if let's say we had two commerce counties and then a trade port and then an in so four base buildings then potentially that 20% extra could be worth more than the 25% increase. But in this case, because our base value here is so low, the T is most likely straight up better. In this case, it is straight up better. So because we do have T now, we're just gonna convert that over. And that's the only thing we're gonna do here. Do we still have the Simon here? No, we took that out. We had an extra Simon now, as you can see, because we ranked up. And we'll decide what to do with that because we could potentially use it for army recruitment purposes. Uh, whether we want extra replenishment or we want uh, perhaps mustering turn or maybe recruitment yeah maybe mustering turn might be what we want to speed up three turns of mustering here would probably increase our mustering rate by another 10 percent or so given that we probably have minus one somewhere else maybe not but even if we don't have that it should put us at around i mean eight turns will be 10 percent five turns would be 16%. So we get 6% extra in a sense with this assignment. Uh, it's an option that we have pretty much, uh, but we'll see. We'll see what we need to do. We can also get really cheeky by using this 15% attrition to hostile forces. So if they stand here, they will suffer increased attrition as well. Uh, if they are running out of supplies, they might not be because they have a strategist, which is a little bit different from the other army because high cunning gives you high military supplies. Uh, down south, we are going to create the synergy between our building and our garrison by using our faction unique building here. Do we have a, we don't have, we have a food assignment. Okay. We're going to upgrade this first and then that. Okay, why now we got rid of the tax building, so now our public order is actually starting to turn positive. And what we want instead is a government support to increase our food. And this can wait a little bit to be upgraded. We don't have that much money to spend on that. Pongchon's getting sieged. 
Koyan's full build, Xingdu is full build, given that we don't have the next tier of reforms. So we're pretty good here. In terms of public order, it looks like everything's bouncing back, at least where we don't have rebellions. We have active rebellions, which is pushing our public order up really, really fast. And that should help us out. So this army moved. I am not moving this army until we know we want to fight because they're very vulnerable if we leave them on the field they could just break siege and come kill us of course by having the army standing here we could reduce their ammo we could even add in the other vanguard general not him but Sa Sheng, who is also burn officer so we have two burn officers for a 60 percent ammo decrease on the enemy that's very helpful but right now, I don't think that's what we want. We have a couple of spying situation. We're not going to send a rescue force just yet, like we said. So we already seen there's no new recruit that we're interested in. So what we're going to take a look at is our current guy, because I'm worried he might die. If Zhou Rong chases out and attacks them and kill them, then he's just going to die. And that's just a waste of a character. Lady Me also bounced back, so I don't think this plan is going to work. We're never going to save up enough point to get him to do both of these actions at the same time. It would be 40 points over here and 75, and that's going to take us another 8 turns. That's way too long. She might even lose the minus 5 from death of a friend. And then we also need to take the temple away from them to steal her. So this is not a plan that's going to work out right away for us. So instead... What we can do is just recall him for the silver armor and then we'll fire him. The recall will take us 25 and 25, leaving us 15 and 10 to do stuff. But I don't think there's anything that can be done with 15 and 10. Uh, we can deny military supply to their own army, which will just screw them over more. Might as well, right? Might as well. So what you want to do here when you're denying army is you pick whose army you're denying. And this army is Tao Ying's army. So we pick Tao Ying. He's the commander here. We can pick anyone who's in that army. And we simply confirm. He lost military supply, slowing their replenishment rate. And then we're going to summon him back just to not waste any of the actions that he has. And we have extracted him. It will take him a turn to get here. But he will be immediately gone from this army, thus sparing him from a fate of death. And they might not make it now, because now it's going to be even weaker perceived, and they could just go attack and wipe them out, which would be very interesting, because Taoing here doesn't have any resiliency. So if he dies, there's going to be a new leader. I believe the mom will take over, and there might be more death of friend and other issues within the faction, and perhaps we can steal the character through a different method at that time. But that is what we're going to bet on. And elsewhere, diplomacy, if we take a quick look. Because we ranked up, we also have a new trade route. We also have more things we can do. We can do alliances now, which is an upgraded version of coalition. Not interested. For the same reason, we're not interested in coalitions. All right, trade agreement. So Liu Bei is someone who we want to stay friends as. Tao Ying is someone I want to eventually wipe out. So Liu Bei will be the target here. And plus 5.2 is very nice. So let's negotiate. Okay, he has no items. So in this case, we're just going to ask for money. Let's see if he saved up a bunch or he has good income. Mm. Both are not exactly true. So let's see. He's not that rich. He's paying us a lot, which is a big issue of why he can't afford anything at this point. Because we already have most of his payments. So we're probably looking at somewhere like, okay, 575, yeah. So th it's better if we get flat cash if you compare the two. So we're going to do just that and secure ourselves a trade deal. I might be able to push this a little higher. No, nope. Don't tell me we had the exact amount. We had the exact amount. Okay. All right. Lucky us. And our relationship goes up all the way, trending towards 141. So Dobe is going to be a great friend with us for a long time. And we also made him go into a war with Yuan Shao. We paid him for that. But I, in my mind, that's a really good move because that prevents him from ever becoming friends with Yuan Shao. And this way we can just have him as a friend going forward. 
Ryobei is pretty trustworthy in the game. His AI is pretty, you know, it's not like treacherous like Cao Cao. Cao Cao is a very difficult AI to deal with. Alright, so it seems like we have active deals with pretty much everyone, whether it's war. Sun Ce could use another deal. We have food offer on the table. He is no longer that positive with us. We can probably invest a few of our manipulate in the future on him. Uh, but right now, because we have so much food, and because he needs food up till... Let's see when it starts dropping to 0.1. There we go. We can definitely afford a food at 39. And we can try to get some value back. Now that silver armor is kind of out of reach. Maybe just payment. He is pretty rich. He has lots of land. Okay, so I'm guessing per turn is going to work out great here. Oh yeah, it's going to work out great. It's a big jump here though. Maybe we'll even balance it out a little bit here. Four hundred is no good. Three eighty-eight, three seventy-five, three seventy. Okay, so three seventy and this. So if we can increase it by thirty-seven and stay under five. Okay, so we can't do that. It's close, but not that close. So we'll make more if we just divide the lump sum a little bit. Let's see how much more we can push this. Okay, three hundred one. That's as close as we can. And let's take this deal. Just want to lock him up in the deal. Don't want them to turn us. Ryoba has one more turn. His vassals have timed out in terms of the food deal. We're very happy to offer everyone food, especially when the value starts at 2.5 and jumps by 1.5 for the first one. So he wants two food. Does he have extra items? He does not. Does he make a ton of money? He does not. Does he have money saved up? He does. So, there's something here. Um, I think I can maybe even get a thousand here. Oh, wishful thinking. 775. Close. 765. Alright, we'll take that. And same thing with Huangzu. Because you have to take care of the vassals as well as the master. Or else the vassals will ask the master to declare war on you and it'll be the same result. So everyone needs to be taken care of. Once again, poor faction with not that much money saved. We're not going to be too greedy here. Doesn't matter how much we get. We just want a sustainable deal. There we go. Not dealing with Taoying just because we plan to go to war with them. Same thing with Zhuo Rong. I don't care about Yan Baihu, to be honest. If he wants to fight us, that's totally fine. We have a nice ring of good commandery surrounding him. And then we're just going to end turn. We're going to observe if they challenge us here. Uh, we could probably swap him to the Chancellor for more income, or maybe even the Grand Tutor for more income. And a new Administrator, right? We still have a few things we got to take care of. Alright, so we currently have Administrators, as you can see, in two of our commanderies here. I think if we have to put a third one, it's probably going to be Huainan for now. Chen is a close second choice, but I think Huainan is the one that could use one right away. And we can just take a look at who has the most bonuses we can add. Taorin could boost commerce and industry. Only industry will be applied here to be honest because they don't have commerce here. That's not good. Which is actually not bad. We can get rid of his title. He has the burn trait, which adds 10% to all sources. That's always really good. And he has high enough expertise to actually discount him by 15%, which is surprisingly high. Peasantry income. And it's going to be high population growth with him. Hmm. That might be actually quite good. Because of the high resolve he has, it's not displayed here. And we're done with most of the construction to the point where I don't need that much construction discount. Wow, these burn officers are just really good for these jobs. 20% on peasantry versus 10% all. We can do a quick math here. Oh, he has this way more industry though. Yeah, 10% on all is going to be better. 
Then Wei's real advantage here if we use him is the fact that he has super high resolve. So we get 10k population growth from each county and eventually there'll be four. So that's 40k population growth and we can shoot the population up, which will boost the income by a mu uh, much more down the line. Whereas if we pick one of our burned officers, the population growth part is not going to kick in. And plus, Dan Wei's getting higher and higher level, although he is very friendly to us. He has very good traits, I believe. Yeah, Dutiful de reduces desire for higher office. Mm. I'll throw him in. I think he deserves the administrator spot for now. And we would like the population growth to continue. And then we have one extra assignment as well. Yeah, we're debating whether we want to get the replenishment bonus going. Because the replenishment here would be actually better than the mustering. But he might be better served on the field because he's a burned officer. Where are we doing construction? Because we do have a bunch of construction saving ones. I guess we're building stuff here. I want to upgrade the commandery. Okay, so... In that case, Harun comes here. Next turn, we'll upgrade the commandery. All right, armies move, armies moved. All right, let's just see what happens here. That's where I'm most curious. Let's continue. Wait, wait. We don't need a Grand Commandant because we're not recruiting units. I thought I was, that's why we kept him here. But we're not investing in a second army, which means peasantry base or trade influence plus character experience. I'll take the money for now. I think this is going to be slightly higher just because we have so many peasantry commanderies or else we would have gone for that. All right, now we're good. Let's continue and see if Yuan Shao will actually attack us. Alrighty, he is actually fighting us. So we have the chance to loop him and that might do it for this battle here. We might not need a second army. Let's go. Alrighty, we're loaded up in here. They are attacking us from one direction. Oh, two. Sneaky, sneaky unit you know, over here. Okay. Uh, we are going to run out our infantry to a side, preferably with trees and preferably far away from their units. So I guess this side would have to do. And they're just going to be stacked here. Let's call them two. We can just run them to that corner right there. Then we're going to check our general speed. So in this case, she's really fast and unbreakable. So she's going to be the one looping people around. The other two generals will run away. We'll go to a different side. Um, the goal is to stretch their vision out, so you want to not over-invest. You usually don't want one general running by themselves because they'll take damage and they will start breaking in terms of morale and they'll just flee. In her case, she can't flee ever. She fight till her death. Uh, this is because of the armor. So let's hope us uh, survive this battle. All right, let's move them out, move them out, move them out. And her job is just to say hi and be like, everyone chase me. You have some cavalry that runs at 95. We run at 116 because the mobility skill should be 119 usually, but because I think there's a 5% speed debuff here. Yep, we actually lose some of the bonuses. I don't see any fire arrows going up. We're not dueling. And they might just go inside. They might not even care about us. Yeah, they split their force, but then put all their general on one side. Very sneaky. Why is he going so slowly? I almost want to go hit him. But historically, he's the reason when Cao Cao even beats Ren Shao. He betrays Ren Shao. Yeah, he's going slowly just to backstab him. That would be hilarious. Alright, they're not... They're not moving in. They're just getting hit. Nor are they chasing us, which is weird. This side only has two towers. I prefer if they chase us to this side. It would be much better. I will do this on fast. It's not exactly the most entertaining type of battle. Oh, they're chasing the units. Interesting. What if we just go in? There we go. See? The AI just like to react when you go inside the, the city. It's really weird. It triggers them. They're like, you're capturing the city that we're trying to capture. Not allowed. Alright, they're capturing on that side, which is fine. 
the site's still taking a beating. We'll go recapture those soon. I want to get these guys out of vision as quickly as possible. They're attracting way too much attention. Alright, they're going to break vision and hopefully our one unit who still has vision will attract them. If not, we just trigger them real quick. Hey look, we're inside! Alright, he's shooting at us with his bow. We'll block, range block chance. Alright, they're all over the place, capturing all the interior towers. Go for it, doesn't matter. Alright, they're going in. Don't, don't go in, come back, come back. Alright, they're going in. And they're going to capture everything. Um, so, there's a couple ways you can do this. One, you can just go do something else. You know, spend the next 30 minutes letting them time out in a draw. Or you can actually get them to come out. It's not that hard to get them to come out. And we can resume the chase. I really want to chase them down and kill them. Yeah, let's do that. It's a single range unit. And there's a couple over here too. Oh, we don't want to... If they're not running from away from us, from skirmish mode, then we don't want to stay in combat because they're actually going to melee attack us. Yeah, we're cavalry. We just charge repeatedly until they route. And the tower is even doing some job too. Alright, one range unit down. Get some kills on her. I don't want her to level up though. Wait, yeah, where's Sunbai? Yeah, we want them to level up. Hold on. Uh, well, this one's might as well. Don't waste that experience. We'll turn off dueling on them in case they want to challenge us. And avoid that situation. Because there's a couple here that we can just kill off. Ah, oh, here they come, here they come. Alright, they might group up and come out. Uh, we still have towers over here, over here, and not over there, but we'll go capture this ahead of time. Let them all filter out first. They're gonna group up together before they start moving. None of their units have raider, so nothing is getting burned. They didn't bother to capture our capture point. That's how worthless this is, 10 points of morale. They really need to change that. There's two things they could change. One, towers don't fire unless there's a unit standing in the circle. So you have to garrison the tower to have them fire, which I think makes sense. Two, change the capture point to a victory point for all settlements. So you actually force to defend, and that would also help. Uh, both will stop this strategy, and I don't think either one's a hard change. Alright, they're going to react to her going inside. They're all going to go inside the second she goes inside. They're going to ignore this. And they're going to go go chase her. Because that's really triggering for them. Watch. Might as well capture everything while we're here. They're going to go back in, try to recapture some of these and take some a little bit of damage as well. I will loop around. See, the process of recapturing this means they take a little bit of damage. And then we go the other side. And guess what we're going to do over here once they start moving over there. You gotta say they're thorough. They capture all the outer towers, or the inner towers. Oh, he actually stepped out. Ooh, ooh, we're actually getting chased. Okay. Please chase us. Yes, no? We're slow, we're slower than you. One of them have an armor, which makes him really slow. Oh, we're getting chased, we're getting chased. Go, 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 go. Might actually work. I want to draw them a little bit out so they can get shot first, and then we make the turn. Now, ideally, these two aren't the one we want to get chased, but it's fine. 
We can't really be picky at this point. Oh no, don't come out of this gate. They're gonna capture it. Alright, we're gonna trigger a couple of them so they don't capture it. Go capture this. Oh, you shall stay away from us. Stay away from us. We're too slow. Yeah, the Huaxiong with the armor, super slow. But the second she steps inside, you'll see everyone get triggered. The vision reaction by the AI is just a little bit overboard. Like, whenever one of your units in trouble in the field, just go back in the settlement, capture something, and everyone will come to you. It makes no sense. I mean, at this rate, we're still going to need a rescue army because we don't have enough towers to kill off all his men. Alright, watch how we trigger them. You see how they're, they're starting to circle us? Ah, and the second we step over here, they're like, no! Someone's capturing our towers on the other side of town that we don't even care about. Must go back and chase them away. And take casualties doing it. Then they don't care about these anymore. We can put our regular army on the field. They wouldn't go go chase those guys. This is all about these towers on the inside. Oh, he's just still trying to shoot us. Okay. Now it's much more efficient if we spread them out so that we can basically go, oh no, 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 don't path inside. That we can poke in from different places and make the entire AI armies loop around and then we can capture more of the inside during that time and therefore when they come back they take more damage. So for example, they're all shifting this way for some reason. Stand pretty close to the doors. You want to be farther away from their cavalry, of course. So he can come in, capture this. Which will surely trigger them. Instead of going to chase him. Oh, just stepping in. Just stepping in. Got them. Chase us back. Now we can take this one, maybe. And then maybe do some damage as they come over here to recapture it. Oh no, their cavalry is coming fast. Uh, we almost had it. There we go. Assaulting AI on this game. They really don't know what to do. I mean, I don't blame the AI. Like, the problem is this. If they have this as a victory point, then what the AI is doing makes sense. Get the town as early as possible and then keep the town. Right? That's what you want to do in assault. Your goal is to get the town. But in this case, because this is not a victory point, because we don't have walls, that's the only thing that's making it not a victory point, they can never win here. As defender, we just have to hold. Now, of course, they can repeat this five turns, and on the fifth turn, the siege event, and oh, we can heal because we are bandit. What have we been doing? We can actually heal. Forgot about that. We could have healed four times in this entire battle. Each one's about 1.6k. It's actually not bad. See if we can get another heal out. I think we can. But we don't have 20 seconds for the full heal. You want to heal yourself. It's range, so everyone gets healed. 
And this battle's over. A draw. Alrighty, we got a draw. And we can get a thousand from the draw. Wonderful. Okay, more peace deals with Dong Min. Liu Bell also joined war. Liu Chong has been taken over by his wife because he got assassinated. Ooh. Ju Chu and our son getting along together. Good for them. Wow, so many characters. Alright, let's first take a look at item situation. Whenever we have a huge list like this. Let's see. Anyone with good items? Ooh, Chen Yu. He has an item, but it's not that great. Okay, now we're talking. Bronze item. And let's also switch them over for traits. We're trying to spot out a burn trait. That's a negative. Now we're looking for skill trees. In particular, maybe a bandit skill tree. Well, this is actually a pretty good start for vanguards, but we don't really need a generic vanguard here. Mastermind's generic, but it's for... Um, oh, it's not for anything, but it's, it's generic. But Chen Yu here is not a generic character. He's historical. He's just treated as generic here, as with many characters. We're still going to have to ignore him then, just because we don't really need him. Lookout here, also not that interesting. Also generic, by the way. Another lookout. Agent, which is another generic. Uh, don't see. Also not technically generic. I mean, historical, but generic in the game. She's the one with the item. Also generic. Uh, I don't think we need to spend a thousand just for a bronze item. We could. It's not a terrible idea, but... What is her item, by the way? I think it's a cunning book. Yeah, six secret teaching. It's a cunning book. Increase ambush chance. Not bad. Alright, we recruit and fire. Just want to snatch the item. Ooh, we're an officer being angry here. Lack of purpose. We want to summon them onto the field. We'll just remove it for now. No one really needs ambush chance this turn. I am going to have to give him an item that can make him slightly happier. Probably one of these instinct items. Doesn't really matter who I strip them away from. I believe Sahoyan is decently happy. Yep. We're going to have to send a rescue army, I believe. I'm not going to let them keep sieging us. We are actually hit, getting hit pretty hard with attrition each turn, too. So... We could utilize them, or we could just use some of our better generals. We'll plan that out at the end. We'll also use our other armies first. I don't think we can reach them, because of the way River is designed. But... I still feel good enough to declare war on him right away. Assuming there's no issues. There's no issues. There's no warning about trustworthiness because we ended a deal in the last five turns. I believe it's been longer than five turns. So we're gonna go over here and attack from this direction. I think that's probably the closest we can get while still healing this turn. Yep, and we'll be able to fight them next turn. Down south, our rebel cleansing army. We can't reach them, but that's fine. We also have to trespass through Yanbaihu's territory to go hit them, and that's also fine. It'll be a diplomatic penalty, but if he wants to declare war on us again, I'm down for it. Zhao Hoyang comes back. They're not upgrading this. Alright, we're gonna upgrade this to level 3. This to level 2. I'm gonna upgrade the military buildings first. Hmm, why not? This is not the one we want. We want this one, but we need an industrialist, which means we have to wait for a state workshop upgrade. That will need to wait for a reform, so I have to wait on both. Trade port upgrade. Now we're out of money. That rescue army is going to be really low tier because we have no cash. 
All right, three turn upgrade here, and then we're going to upgrade it again. Then what are we going to do with this rescue army? Well, I think Xu Chu should lead it. He also doesn't have a retinue right now, so it's easy to summon. He doesn't like anyone. It's very difficult to stick him somewhere. I don't want to use my son. He doesn't have resiliency. Huang Long Luo. Let's see. Huang Long Luo is not a particularly good general, but he has units, which means we don't have to recruit any for him. He also can command and give increased post-battle loot, which is actually pretty good against the big army. I guess Huang Long Luo can can be summoned. Save us money on the units. That's pretty much it. And then I would like to use him, also for his unit, and also for the fact that he's a burned officer. Which can debuff their ammo and makes it easier on us. So what we're going to do is try to get a little bit of money from someone. Non-aggression pack, 0.3. Not very high, but maybe we can interest him in a unique item, potentially? to hurt his satisfaction and then get paid I want cash because we need that army going but we still want like an optimal amount of both so let's work our way down here to see when it stopped growing like a crazy ratio here 0 0.6, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.4 0.3. That's already pretty reasonable, not gonna lie. Oh, but we are getting very little from this value, right? Hmm. Alright, because we need an army, he's gonna get a discount here. Ah, wonderful number. Yeah, we're gonna use that money to summon ourselves another unit burn officer they don't get along it's fine i'm gonna stick them in here that's not considered a move because they had no movement so technically it's not a move we're gonna get two percent extra replenishment right now it's 35 percent with the mustering rate it's not super high but it's gonna be fine we're also gonna move them closer because they're gonna join the fight as well it's gonna be a massive rescue effort he might attack us again during this end turn, but we're going to have a, another repeat situation. Let's see if there's any new turncoats we can recruit. Oh, someone from Liu Bei's faction. Very interesting. But not interested right now. Not a unique general. Just someone who's unhappy with Liu Bei, which is a rare occurrence, to be honest. Did our spy come back? He did. So he's going to drop off this armor, which is wonderful. Now there is fondness toward Jorong. He was captured and released. We're going to release him. He can go join Jorong. He's completely useless for us. We want the armor to give them to one of our administrators. Because that's a nice 13 point of expertise increase right here on Yue Jin. Oh, Yu, Yu Jin, not... Uh, and then Tao Shan's going to go away. Goodbye. Alright, so we're going to go rescue next turn. Uh, the retinue obviously is not going to be full healed, but we'll have 50% of the retinue forces. It's not really about the retinue forces, it's about our generals going in. Poison volley, burn officer debuff, Xu Chu with his gold weapon. That should be the things that will take care of business for us, so let us continue. Nobody wants to buy our herdsmen, that's a no. Yep, and Yuan Shao wants to siege us again, so he's gonna lose a bit more men uh, before the big fight. Maybe we can lock out and wipe them out, but I doubt that. Uh, let's jump in here for a quick fight. Alright, we're gonna showcase this battle because I have a feeling that we might be able to actually beat them here. Of course that feeling could be wrong, but we'll see. Uh, we're gonna run them over here this time. I think we'll take the slower generals and run them the other side. Have her go out and face out with the enemy forces. There's actually plenty of towers here. So let's do this. Run this way, run this way. Come out. Say hi, do not duel. 
Hello, guys. Hi. Hi. Ooh, cavalry chasing. Oh, are you guys actually going to chase me this time? See, but the army on the other side is just going to walk in, though. Come on, guys. I'm behind you. I'm attacking your strategist. They don't care. <laughs> they don't care about you, Sunyu. I see why you betrayed Yuanshao's faction. Oh, oh, Yuanshao is actually st standing up for you. Oh, wait. What happened? Oh, no, no, we're just getting hit. Nothing. They're just going inside. Nothing happened. Nothing's changed. Okay. Let's see if we can draw them out. Stop shooting at us. Alright, I'm gonna try to capture and force them to chase. Come on, chase us, chase us. You guys have all the interior towers, just chase us now. You know you want to, yep, yep, come out, come out. We're gonna lure all of them out first before we lure them into more towers, or else they're gonna just... Oh, there's actually a chance, I... The feeling was correct. Alright, let's get them over here. Ah, they're capturing that one. Shame. Oh, he came out to chase us before he captured it. Now he's gonna get wiped by that. Alright, stay on me, stay on me. Eyes on us. Come out. Right, because they won't come out, I actually want them to route out of this gate here. Come on, we're faster than all those cavalry units. Yeah, come out first, and then we'll loop them to this side towers. Alright, come, come, come. Oh, they're all out. Perfect. We have four good towers on this side. Come on. Pick up the pace. The rescue army was for naught. We can use the rescue army to try to capture Yuan Shao, though. We can swap one of the shaman items back. I mean, Zanbai has one right now. We have a chance to capture them after this battle, too, if we win. Yes, full nicely. Very, very nice. Yeah, pick off the cavalry first. Those are the super annoying units. They actually pose a threat to our generals. Alright, that guy is about to fall. Alright, one down. Second one. What is this staring contest? They didn't move. Do they see them? Oh, they see them. Oh, what? How did they gain vision of these guys? All right, hide over here. You know what happens when this happens? We just uh, let them go for a little bit. They're still in range, let them get shot. You can see the general dying over here. Once they move out of range, Okay, now they're out of range. We just go capture one. That triggers them immediately to turn around. Look at that. Look at that turn around. And then we come out. And we're back to the chase. That general's gonna die though. And then it's gonna trigger the other two generals to fight us. Oh, here comes the cavalry. Moving really, really fast. So we gotta get out of here. I'm not capturing that because they might just shortcut in to chase us. I'd much rather take a big loop around them like this. That's where we keep them in front of these four towers. A nice bit of overlapping damage on them. Now we're on this side of the staring contest. Make sure he can't shoot us with that bow. Come 
Why are they not moving? That's my question. Because they can actually loop us and trap us in the middle, but I don't think they're doing that. I mean, they're getting shot. Well, not fake. Oh, wedge formation. Oh, the enemy general died. He got triggered. He's trying to charge at us. We'll get some charge speed. See how much faster when we click on a unit. Calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down. Calm down. Kill him. Uh, he's gonna catch us. We're pretty tired. Alright, we're gonna try to use charge speed. Juke. Juke. Don't kill me, I have a son in this faction, he's still young. 90 turns is a long time. Even though I'm only here to hold on to the armor until Talpi comes of age. There we go, the carry's gone. It's just Yuan Shao, who is unbreakable? He might be. Oh. She died. It's alright, we have other generals. Activated. Oh, we should have been healing this whole time. Oh, he wasn't in range. That's okay. Hunt him down. We actually lost the general because she um, has no resiliency. Hua Xiong versus Yuan Shao. That's a battle we never expect to happen. Oh, he actually whacked us pretty good. Oh! <laughs> Some bot came in and just finished him. Okay. So much for a rescue mission. Alright, so the siege is done. Our general died. The armor is still in our faction, don't worry. We won the battles, so we're not losing anything. We actually gained item. We captured Venchuo as well. Uh, we can execute him for the armor, or we can just release him. And not only will Yuan Shao like us in that sense, they're Oathworns, and also he will give us a favorable peace deal because we're not going to wipe out Yuan Shao in this war. This war is just defend until we can get a very wealthy and very lucrative peace deal, and then we'll finish him off later. So we'll release, get some fondness, so next time we capture him, maybe he will join the faction. And we'll get more money. Alrighty, so this doesn't concern us. We have lost a general. A great loss, the first time we lost a general. Extra experience for the leader. All planned. Tombkeeper. In the wake of a friend's dear friend's death, a man appears at court requesting to be the keeper of your late friend's tomb. Ah, so tomb watching. There is some suspicion, yet it is Xun Yu, considered by some to be a fool, who step forth and demand the man be investigated. Before employing him, he is subsequently revealed to be none other than the murderer, and as such he is swiftly executed for his crimes. But this is from the Romance of Three Kingdoms, I believe. I'm not familiar with the story, but it's quite interesting this event. Never had a trigger. This must be a Shunyo unique event, and given that Shunyo is a new character added in, this must be a new event added in. So I've never seen this event actually. Alright, Sun Ce declaring Wang Xiao Mo Ke. Dong Min declaring Wang Yuan Shao. Interesting. Yuan Shao is fighting like the whole world right now. Wow, this is a busy turn. Okay, anyhow, uh, we beat them back. They're on the run now. We can actually turn our rescue team to an offensive chase down team and wipe them out. And other than that, it looks pretty good. We're going to send our main force over. Taoying's the next target. We'll be wiping them out. Kong Rong got confederated. He's in the Liu Bei's faction now. Interesting. So this is all Liu Bei, most likely. So we'll find out what happens after we absorb Taoying. And then we'll have a pretty nice boundary. You know, pretty much the eastern, mid-southern portion of the map. 
and we can decide what to do there. I think we'll probably keep Nobe as a friend, and we'll start setting our eye out on this side of the map. We'll probably need to declare war back with the Han Empire, with Domin's faction. Might wait a few turns for that. Uh, we're going to see what we border over here and then decide. We're going to get eventually a peace deal with Yuan Shao. Probably cancel a trade deal with them. Maybe switch a trade partner, wipe them out, collect the last county of Huainan, and probably find He Yi over here to fight. And those are all things we're going to plan to do. Hopefully you guys enjoy this one. I know it's just a lot of looping. We don't actually have a real army fighting real armies just yet um, because we can't afford it. We have our one army collecting territories and building our economy in the south. We have finished that. So in the future, we're going to have some more real fights. Um, still mainly a diplomatic game in terms of how we maintain our relationship, keep our costs at the minimum, get everything developed, and then just turn it on and the snowball get out of hand. That's kind of the approach here, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye!